Have you ever wondered how you can be more courageous and less fearful about the things you're looking for? That's what we'll talk about today. Courage is found in unlikely places. J.R.R. Tolkien. Today we're going to talk about the same book we talked about last week, which is The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Transform your life, work, and confidence with everyday courage. Last week we talked about how to get yourself to act. And it's interesting because in her video, she talks about acting and just doing it. There's another part of this book that really talks about having courage. And I think that's important for us because how many times do we not get our goals because we feel like we don't deserve our goals? We're not good enough to get our goals. It is so interesting to me how many qualified, really great people I meet who will secretly tell me, you know, I don't think I can do this job or I got promoted to this position and I don't think I'm good enough. I don't know that anyone feels qualified to do the job they're doing. Do I some days feel like I'm not qualified to do a podcast? Maybe. Do I have friends who do amazing work and they wonder, why is anyone listening to me? Yeah, absolutely. People feel unqualified or lack courage all the time. And that lack of courage is what's causing you not to get what you want in your life. And she says that if you're looking for a person who can change your life, Look in the mirror because it's going to be you when you have that courage, confidence every day to act on the things you need to act on. And once you learn this about yourself and once you learn to have that courage, it will be there for you whenever you have any challenge. You'll have it every morning when you get up. You'll have it every day in the middle of your work. You'll have it every time you have to have a difficult conversation with someone Just learn this one thing and it'll affect how you do everything in your life. She says that courage is the ability to do something that is difficult or scary. Stepping out of our comfort zone, doing something that's really hard. But she says in the end that sometimes courage is just getting out of bed in the morning. That's where courage comes in for me almost every day. I don't want to get out of bed. And in the last podcast, we talked about Rosa Parks and how Her brain just said no when she was asked to go to the back of the bus and she sat down and how much courage that took. She didn't hesitate. She didn't think about it. She just had the courage to act. That's what's important. And when she did that, again, it changes the whole world. So how can we get courage to do the things that are probably a lot less scary than defying an entire society? How can we do that for ourselves? And she talks about when talking to senior citizens about the meaning in their lives and this research that went into what people regretted the most. This study found out that one of the number one regrets senior citizens had, I wish I hadn't spent so much of my time worrying. It's hard for people to worry because it, first of all, is damaging to you. I think that worrying is probably the thing that damages our health almost more than anything else once you get rid of the weight, drugs, alcohol, all the big things out of there. Worrying is terrible for us. It's terrible for our sleep, our hormone levels. It's terrible for our heart. And I remember reading about how belly fat is a very liquid type of fat. And what it's meant for is so that when we have a tiger that's chasing us, we have this quick available liquid fuel that will get us to go and run away. But what happens now is that when we get stressed at work, our brain doesn't really get that we're not being chased by tigers anymore. It just pumps out all that liquid energy into our system, cholesterol, and then we don't do anything with it because we're not running away from a tiger. We're sitting there and stewing in our own worry And it's damaging to our health to just do that all the time. And that's what she really hopes we get past is that stewing, that fear that keeps us from acting. And when you have these negative thoughts, it's just created in your brain. Your brain is inventing a bunch of things that just don't really exist. I knew someone who was afraid of public speaking in a conference where everyone 
is really a group of friends where our customers love us. We love them. Everyone's rooting for you. And when you get up in front of your customers and something embarrassing happens, like you trip or the microphone doesn't work or something you said kind of fell flat. You know what? Everyone in that room is cheering you on because we're a very close knit group. And so when people become afraid of speaking in front of that group, it's something that's being built up in your head. It's not true because they're hoping for you, you're hoping for you, and nothing's going to go wrong. So don't be afraid of those types of situations. That's a situation that's just completely invented in your head. It's not a part of reality. And Mel Robbins Sink says it's okay for us to be scared as long as we're willing to do something about it, as long as we're able to be brave and go over that thing. Someone talked about bravery is not a lack of fear. We see a lot of acts of courage in our lives around us. And we think, wow, that person is so brave. Why aren't they afraid? And you know what? They are afraid. They just act anyway. That's what real bravery is. And so she said the biggest thing that we have to do is give our mind an explanation. And that means that our brain builds up that anxiety in us, right? It doesn't know if we're being chased by a tiger or we're super stressed out at work. But our brain is trying to come up with the reason why we're in danger. And it's pumping all these chemicals in us primarily to help us escape or run away. But what will happen is we get nervous about doing that same thing again. So if we did some public speaking and our heart was pounding out of our chest and our adrenaline was running like crazy and our stress levels were up, the chances that we're going to volunteer to speak again later become much less because we realized what a bad experience it was. Our brain reacts to that as if we escaped death or we escaped something horrible and we feel relieved when it's over But not because we did the really hard thing, but we escaped something that was really awful. And so that's where we have to completely reframe that explanation that our brain is going with it. We'll see our heart going crazy. We'll see our breath speeding up. And your brain will just completely go into tiger chasing mode. And so if you tell yourself to calm down, if you tell other people to calm down, have you ever told someone to calm down? Do you know how well that works when you say, hey, just calm down. It'll be fine. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't work on us and it doesn't work on other people. And so all you can do is try to change the story because our brain, again, is not dumb, but it's trying to react in such a way to preserve our life. And so what we have to do is tell it a different story and then it'll react in a different way. So if you were about to fly You change the story with, wow, I'm so afraid of flying. This is so scary into, I am so excited to go to Tahiti. I'm so excited to see my relatives across the country. I'm not nervous. I'm excited. And you reframe that whole story and suddenly your brain goes, oh, she's not scared. She's excited. And then it'll continue in the right way. Or if you're going in for a job interview and I'm so frightened, I'm afraid I'm going to screw up. This is really scary to me. And you reframe it into, I'm excited to hear about the possibilities of this new job, to learn about this other company, and to hear how this might fit in my own life. When I was interviewing for my job that I have now, I reframed the whole fear into me interviewing them. I had a little time to get a job, and I wanted this time to find the right job. And so I looked at job interviewing as, I hope they impress me. So it was no longer my job interview. It was their job interview. And that somehow changed it for me because now I was shopping and looking for something. At the same time, they were shopping and looking for something. But in my brain now, the onus was on them to impress me. And somehow that took away a lot of the fear I had. And inside your brain, anxiety, fear, excitement, all feel exactly the same. If you're about to go on a roller coaster, it feels almost the same as if you were going to be chased by a tiger. Scary, but you're excited. The thrill of the ride and that combination of fear and anxiety and excitement all feel the same to your brain. So when you start replacing that same physiological feeling with I'm excited instead of I'm scared, it'll make all the difference in the world. And she tries to come up with what she calls the anchor thought, 
which is the thing that's going to bring her back into thinking about something in the proper way. So she's on the airplane and she's scared. She's going to think, I'm so excited to see my relative I hadn't seen in two years. I'm so happy that I'm going to get a chance to see Stonehenge. I've always wanted to see that. And so that reframing of fear into excitement is what will help you get over it and help you to act. Because again, the whole point of getting over fear is not to just get over fear and feel less stressed out. That's a perk. But it's so that you start acting. You get on the plane, you buy the plane ticket, you send your resume off, you make appointment for a job interview, or you talk to your spouse about something that's been frightening to you. Go talk to a friend about something that's stressing you out. Acting is the point of getting over that fear. And she says, quote, when we master our mind, everything becomes possible. If you can get what she calls that everyday courage, you will learn that it will give you confidence. It will make you personally better and easier to talk to when you meet people. It'll bring you success when you're trying to build confidence with your boss or build confidence with yourself or get your customer to listen to the things that you're trying to advise them to do. Those things come better when you're confident. When you go to a customer site and you say, well, I kind of think you should do this. What do you think about doing that? And you don't sound confident about it. They're not going to be confident in you or your advice. Once you gain this confidence, you'll start being able to identify your own goals. You'll start knowing the things you want to do. I think that when I was in my 20s and I was confused and I lacked confidence, it was hard for me to get my goals because I just didn't even know what I wanted to do. I was so afraid of everything and everyone that I never tried really hard to do the hard things it would take to get goals that I wanted to get. And it all came to me when I applied for a job I was completely unqualified for. And it was funny to me because it was a job working in a newspaper where I was going to be their investigator. So someone would come to me and said, hey, we're doing a story about Finland today. And I would do all this research for them. And then I'd produce a small paper about Finland. And so they'd have background on the story that they were going to do for the news. Actually, if you knew me, that's a really perfect job for me. But what I missed is in the job requirements, it said a master's degree in library science. Totally missed it. I applied for the job, put my resume in. I was a brand new graduate from college with a lot of nerd stuff and a lot of math stuff. I got interviewed and I actually came in second for the job. And when she brought me in to talk to me about the position and why I didn't get the position, she said, you are our second choice. And that's pretty amazing because you didn't have any of the requirements we said in the job ad. I did something accidentally brave. And once I did that, I realized that there are jobs out there that by the book, you're not qualified to do. But the employer, if you have all the right ingredients, are going to be interested in you. And that broke me. That allowed me to go get my job that I wanted to get because I realized they're looking for the right person they're not looking for check marks off of a box. There's a lot more to a job than just that. She said that the third thing you'll get once you get that confidence is you'll start being able to have deep relationships with other people. If we're afraid in life, if we're not being bold, if we think we're terrible or we think we're not all that great, our relationships suffer because we think we have really nothing to offer other people. And it doesn't allow us that courage to be honest and open with other people and have that real raw relationship that brings true closeness with other people. She says, don't get fooled that it's about introversion or extroversion. There are a lot of extroverts out there who are not confident. And there's a lot of introverts who are very confident. This is not about being bold and talking to people. This is about coming over those insecurities you have finding out the truth about yourself and reframing them so that you can gain courage to do the things. She said in her own life, she was bossy with people. She was aggressive with people. But once she learned confidence, that all fell away. That aggression level that she had with other people was there because she was putting up facade of confidence. But when she actually learned confidence, 
that allowed her to be her best self to everybody. And it made her a better person with everybody. And she says, quote, there will always be someone who can't see your worth. Don't let that be you. If you're not going to be your own cheerleader and you're not going to look at your strengths, no one else is going to do it for you. I know I was someone who was always afraid about pecking order. If I saw someone with a big title, if I saw someone who was way over me in the company, I suddenly became sheepish. I wouldn't talk to them. I was scared of talking to them. And it really, I think, hurt my career almost in every company I was in because I was so timid around anyone with power. And then slowly that started changing as I gained confidence. At one of my customer conferences, I met a fellow who wrote a book, and it is one of my favorite books. And I just wanted to say hi to him. And my brain said, no, don't say hi to him. You know, first of all, he's friends with the owner of your company. He is a big deal. Don't talk to him. And you know what I did? I could have invented the Mel Robbins thing because I just said, you know what? I have this opportunity to meet him. And I did it. And I talked to him. And then to get the job that I have now, I had to actually interview with the owner of the company I belong to. And that freaked me out because I really hadn't had a lot of experience talking to owners. But that experience helped me to realize that he's just a regular human being and that you can talk to him. And I had talked to him multiple times almost every week because I got to know him in that interview and it eased up everything in me. I even got called out to an owner of a bigger company I worked for because her computer at her home needed fixing. I got to meet her dog. I got to see her house. And I realized she's human. In the end, we're all just human beings. And so when you get over that fear, whatever it is, like I said, in my case, it was pecking order. It will let you do all the exciting things. And it'll let you talk to people who could become your mentor, who could help you to get a job, who could help you gain whatever goal it is that you've been trying to do. I'll tell you that even in my own podcast, I've been hesitant to include people in my social media about the books that I review or talk about. I think, what if they don't like what I'm saying about it? What if they just don't like the fact I'm doing a podcast about their book? And I decided to be brave. I was going to do it. And one of the authors retweeted my tweet. And I was thrilled because, first of all, he's the guy who says that you should do that. <laughs> he's the guy who tells you that you should go find your dreams and that you should go after the things you want in your life. And for him to retweet to his Twitter followers just meant everything to me. It meant that my fear was unfounded, and it gave me courage to do it again. And she says in the end, this everyday courage has done so many things for her that she was able to dance by herself at a music concert, which is something I wouldn't do. But I see people dance at work at parties that we have in our company, and I always think, how are people so brave that they can get up and dance in front of other people? Because that is horrifying to me. She said she got to meet an author that she really admired and got a picture taken with them that she was able to speak to her husband about something that was bothering her, that all these things happened in her life because she gained the courage to actually tackle those things and talk to herself in a different way. This seems to be, to me, like the next step in that is that you act and you get things done and you just do them. You wake up in the morning and you exercise. You eat the healthy meal, you send your resume to someone you want to, or you talk to your best friend about something that's been bothering you. Do it. Just do it. But this is different quality to it because once you learn the courage to do the things that you want in your life, suddenly everything else becomes easier. So my challenge to you is try to find one way this week that you can be courageous about something that you have not felt courageous about. Getting on a plane's a little hard because that takes some planning, some tickets. But maybe it's about talking to someone you needed to talk to. Or maybe it's about sending a resume to someone you wanted to send a resume to. Or maybe talking to someone at work about something that's been bothering you. Try to get that courage to do something bold. And figure out what it is that was stopping you all this time and see if you can reframe it into a new story. I'm not scared to talk to my boss. I'm excited about the opportunities it will provide.
And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Mel Gibson in Braveheart. If you make enemies on both sides of the border, you'll end up dead. We all end up dead. It's just a question of how and why. Uh, I'm not a coward. I want what you want, but we need the nobles. We need them. Aye. Nobles. <laughs> now tell me, what does that mean to be noble? Your title gives you claim to the throne of our country. But men don't follow titles. They follow courage. Now our people know you. Noble and common, they respect you. And if you would just lead them to freedom, they'd follow you. And so would I. See, courage comes in all sorts of ways. Being leaders and being someone who can really get people to their best heights and bring a country together. There's also courage in doing a Scottish accent. You probably have no business trying. Yes, courage has many different takes. Everyone, thanks so much. I hope you have a great week and I hope you do the bold thing. And if you're feeling a moment of boldness out there, tell someone else about this podcast and let them know that they can start with small steps.